This is a regular wine bottle and we'll turn this into a cool wine bottle. I have engraved a lot of glass till now, but this video is all about how to engrave on glass bottles. I'll engrave on different colors of glass and I'll show you what you get when you use different coatings. I have included the settings that I used and I will tell you a cool trick to test out your designs without wasting bottles. I'll also show you how to set up your rotary module for engraving. In the end, I'll show you how to seal the bottle once you have it engraved and filled. So stick with me till the end to learn how to engrave glass bottles on a diode laser. Hello guys and welcome back to Mellow Pine Laser. Before we start, laser engraving glass bottles involves lasering paint. So set up your laser in a well ventilated area, use an air filter or an exhaust system if you have one and as always wear your laser safety goggles around lasers. So here is the TLDR version. You get a bottle, clean it thoroughly with some soap and water, wipe it and rub it clean with some alcohol for good measure. Cover the mouth to prevent the paint from going in, coat it with black paint or cold galvanizing compound aka zinc. Make sure the bottle is opaque, set up your rotary and these are the power and speed that I use for my 20W, 10W and 5W lasers. You can take a screenshot or pause the screen. These numbers can change based on what laser you have. You should run a power scale test to get the best result on your laser. Once you are done, clean the glass using water or thinner depending on what paint you used and you are good to go. If you want to learn how to engrave on plain flat glass, you should check out my other video, it should pop up over here. Now to engrave on glass bottles, there are 7 steps. You can engrave on most colors of bottles, but bottles with a greenish or brownish yellow tinge gives better contrast. Usually the engraving will have a low contrast after you engrave them, but once you fill the bottle up, the engraving pops right up. Also, try to choose a bottle that gives you enough area to work on. If you choose a bottle with less diameter, you'll have to turn the bottle around to see the entire engraving. You could use them if you want to engrave some small design or for engraving letters vertically. White bottles with a good amount of flat portion will let you engrave bigger designs. For example, let's say I want to gift a bottle of wine to my friend on his wedding and I plan to engrave their photo on it. I choose a bottle that will let me engrave a design that's as big as possible and I'll make sure the entire design is visible without turning the bottle. So I'll choose a bottle that's more broad like this one rather than something like this. And most importantly, use bottles that are perfectly round, something that can roll easily on your rotary accessory. If you can't find a way to make the design work, you can engrave on bottles with any shape or size. I will not recommend you to use sealed wine bottles for lace engraving. If you want to gift someone a bottle of wine with a custom engraving, I suggest you pour the content into another bottle, engrave the bottle and then pour it back. To engrave on glass bottles, you want them to be really clean. The labels on them can leave behind a bit of glue sticking on. You can use turpentine oil to remove them, just make sure you don't let it get inside the bottle. Once you remove all the labels and glue, give it a good wash using soap and water. After that's done, I used some masking tape to cover the mouth of the bottle. This will prevent the paint from getting inside when we spray them. Once you have the mouth covered, take a clean cloth, some rubbing alcohol and give it a nice rub. Good old rub. <laughs> yeah boy. This is optional but it makes sure it's really clean. Also you should not touch the surface you want to engrave after cleaning. This can leave behind smudges. A quick note, these bottles get really slippery when washing them with soap. So please be extra careful, I learnt my lesson the hard way. If you want to learn things the easy way, we have a free 7 day course called Getting Started with Lasers. We aim at providing a comprehensive yet simple guide for anyone getting into laser cutting or engraving. We cover all the fundamentals which will equip you with the necessary skill set needed to get you started. I will leave the link in the description below, do sign up, you won't be disappointed. As I told you, I tried different paints to show you the difference. Here are the results I got. The best result I got was with cold galvanizing compound or zinc spray. Now on to painting. First we have the good old tempera paint which is water based and easy to use. It gives you a matte finish but it has one problem. It's difficult to get a good even coat on glass using this paint. If you are using tempera paint, use an airbrush or sponge brush. It's better than the regular brush or roller. The next option is to use black acrylic or fabric paint. 
it sticks on well and you can use a brush to get an even coat. It would work well. If you are engraving multiple bottles, you can pour the paint in a shallow container and dip the bottle in it to get an even coat. Then there is the other option which is black spray paint with a matte finish. I used Rust-Oleum Chalkboard Black which worked well for me. The best option however is Cold Galvanizing Compound Spray. It's basically a paint with lots of zinc in it. You can get this stuff on Amazon or local store. Now, while painting, try to give it an even coat as much as possible. If you're using spray paints, try to turn the bottle around to get an even coat or you can go around the bottle. Also, it's not necessary to cover the entire bottle. If you know how much space your design needs, you can paint just enough to cover the area for the design. Another important thing to keep in mind is that if you plan on using the bottle to store wine or anything, make sure you cover the mouth of the bottle well with some masking tape before painting. This is to prevent any paint from getting inside. And also, only remove the covering after you are done cleaning. Now, once you have the bottle painted, let it dry naturally. You can use a hot air gun if you are in a hurry, just make sure you don't overheat the bottle and paint. Also make sure you use the bottle soon after it dries. Leaving it out for too long can mess with your engraving. The next step is to click that subscribe button. You need to do this to make sure that you get perfect engraving on all your laser engraving projects. Because I'm coming up with lots of new videos which are full of cool tips and tricks about lasers. And if you are already a subscriber, hit that bell icon and click that like button. The actual fourth step is setting up your rotary module. Now, you can use Laser Gerbil to run your projects, but I prefer Lightburn. It gives you a lot more options to work with. The first thing I do is take a measurement of the roller I am using. In my case, it's 16.8mm in diameter. You can use a caliper or measure the circumference and divide it by pi. Then I set the rotary parallel to my X axis. Now, on Lightburn, go up to the Laser Tools menu. Click on Rotary Setup, here select Roller or Chuck whichever you have. Rollers are better for engraving bottles. Once you have that, click on Enable Rotary. If you select Rollers, you will see this box called Roller Diameter. Here type in the diameter of your roller. It's 16.8mm in my case. The other thing you need to set is the millimeter per rotation. For that, go back to the roller. Take some masking tape and stick it around one end of the roller as close to the mounting as possible. Now take another piece of tape and stick it on the mounting. Make sure the roller is free to move. Take a ruler and put a mark on both the tapes. This is to check if the roller is in the same place. Now go back to Lightburn, click on test and see how much the roller moves. If it does more than one rotation, the value set in millimeter per rotation is high and you need to bring it down. I'm using the RA2 Pro from Xtool and for me the lines match up perfectly at 32mm per rotation. By the way the RA2 Pro is a good one, it works with all my lasers and has a lot of attachments. I'll be posting a review video of it soon. Now back to setting up your rotary. If the roller is not completing one whole rotation the value you set is too low. You'll have to do some trial and error to make the lines match up perfectly. You will also see an option called mirror output to rotary, we'll come to it in the next step. There is one more important thing to remember here, you have to go to edit, device settings and disable auto homing on startup if you have it turned on. Also it is a good idea to keep fast white space scan off to reduce jerky movement. When it comes to preparing the design for engraving on bottles, the most confusing part can be orienting it correctly. That's why I have this neat trick for you, you enter some text. Set the power and speed for engraving on paper. Get some paper and wrap it around the bottle you want to engrave and engrave on the paper. Now you will get an idea of how your design would look on the bottle. If you are getting a mirrored engraving, turn on the mirror output to rotary option in the rotary setup window that we talked about earlier. Another thing you need to keep in mind is which way you want to engrave it. Do you want to engrave vertically or horizontally? If you want your engraving to be readable when it's standing upright, you need to rotate your design by 90 degrees. If you are not sure about whether you have everything set properly, you can always wrap some paper around the bottle and engrave on it. If you are using images, use the threshold mode and for vectors you can use fill or line based on what you need and make sure your scan direction is horizontal and not vertical. If you set it to scan vertically, the roller will have to make sudden direction changes which will result in improper image. 
For engraving on bottles, it's better to reduce roller motion as much as possible. When you are using vector images, go to cut settings and at the bottom you will see the option to select in which order you want to engrave your images. It is better to select fill all shapes at once. If you have either of the other two enabled, the laser will engrave each one separately and this can cause heat buildup and cause your bottle to crack like it happened for me. You want to give the bottle enough time to cool between passes. If you have thick designs, you can also consider turning bidirectional scanning off to give your bottle more time to cool between passes. After the paint dries, you can run a power scale test to determine the best speed and power for your laser. I'll leave a link to the test file in the description below. Now, you'll need some bottles for running the test. I suggest you get some bottles of beer, gulp it down and use those bottles for testing. If you have a speed and power that you use on plain glass, you can run a box around those numbers and dial it in based on trial and error rather than engraving the entire test pattern. For example, on my 20 watt X Tool D1 Pro, I engraved glass at 7500 mm per minute and 75% power. However, I found that on bottles, I need 100% power at 10,000 mm per minute to get a good engraving. These are the settings I use on my different lasers. You can pause the screen or take a screenshot. Of course, these numbers might not work for you, but you can use these as a starting point for running your tests. Now, to check what power gives you the best engraving, look for the engraving that has a good white appearance. Scratch it a bit and see if it's permanent. If it comes off, you're using too much power. You should either lower the power or increase the speed. If your engraving is too light, you are not using sufficient power or your speed is high. If you get good engraving at several speeds, choose the one at the highest speed, as this will cause less heating of the bottle, which reduces its tendency to crack. Once you have everything set, it's time to start engraving. But before you do that, poke a few holes on the tape to allow the air to escape. Now, I'll show you a technique to perfectly align your bottle with the laser so that your design is not tilted. Most bottles will have a perfectly straight line on the side. This is where the molds join when they make the bottles. Now, what we do is, we move the laser head along the x-axis. If the spot deviates from the line on the bottle, the bottle is not aligned. We look at which side the spot deviated and we adjust the rotary module to get perfect alignment. If the bottle is aligned, the laser spot will be on the line at all points. Once that's done, we roll the bottle and point the laser to the origin. I always like to use the center as origin for retrieving on bottles. You can click on frame to see if everything is where it's supposed to be and hit run. Once the engraving is done, give a minute or two to let the bottle cool down. Once it's cool, remove the paint using paint thinner or water based on what paint you used and you'll get a beautifully engraved bottle. Here are the ones I made. Now, why zinc is the best option? Diode laser beams do not interact with glass, so you need a medium to absorb the laser, heat up and transfer the heat to the glass. Black paint works good, but zinc is the best option. This is because metals conduct heat better, and among metals, zinc has a melting point that's achievable by a diode laser. When the laser beam hits the zinc molecules on the surface, they melt and cause microfractures on the glass that appear white. Black kind of does the same, but zinc does it better. We saw how to engrave glass bottles. We'll now see how we can seal the bottle after engraving and filling it. I have the filled bottle here. I'll first put a cork on the mouth. Now, what I use to seal the bottle is some bottle sealing wax. You can buy pellets of this stuff from Amazon. They have different color options as well. To melt the wax, I'll be using my hot air gun and as a container, I have cut up an old can of paint and cleaned it. Make sure you cut it around 3 inches from the bottom. The bottom has a protrusion inside, so this will let you dip the bottle around 2.5 inches deep. You'll also need some water at room temperature to cool the sealed bottle. Now, I'm doing this for the first time, so my results aren't great. First, we dip the bottle into the wax, pull it out and now we'll let the excess wax drip off. Give it a few turns while it's dripping to get an even coat. 9 to 10 turns should be enough. After that, you dip it into water at room temperature. This cools it and seals it. 
it would be a bit soft and if you want to put some mark on it you can do it at this point like I did. I made a wooden seal on my laser. It says M for Melopine Lasers, the channel you need to subscribe to learn cool stuff about lasers. That's it guys. And yes, if you want to learn how to engrave on glasses without a level surface, Build That Build has a good video about it. You can check that out. If you found this video helpful, you can click the like button. If you didn't, you could click the other one. And also put in your suggestions and opinions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.